I can't think of a couple that ever had a trial separation and got back together, can you? Ken and Deirdre in Coronation Street. I've done it. I've left Sarah for good. I'm telling you, this is why you've got to get back out there. Get yourself a bloke. I've been to bed with the same bloke for 20 years. I'm 40 years old, I've got two kids, and when I look in the bathroom mirror, I've suddenly got my mum's arms and my dad's tits. Is your mum lusting after blokes from work? She's allowed to now. Well, who knows when it started? What are you saying? You split up because mum's having an affair. I know you had an affair. I never had an affair. I bet I know who put this idea into your head. Yeah, well, he told me not to say anything. Yeah, I bet he did. True, Paul. Have you been having an affair? Yeah, I suppose so. And did you lie to your daughter? Not exactly, no. How do you mean, not exactly? He means yes. I mean yes. So you lied, despite the fact that what you did would alienate Sarah and damage your relationship with your children? You make it sound like I did something terrible. Nobody died, did they? Is that your measure of a successful emotional strategy? No deaths? Like I said, it's been a good week. Look, I know it's not easy to tell the truth. Especially when it's something the other person doesn't want to hear. Oh, you're talking about Sarah, right? Because believe me, cowardice and masturbation were the only things that kept this marriage going. OK. Sometime in the next week, if you find yourself in a corner, you might want to try telling the truth. <laughs> That's easy for you to say. You don't have to do it. Well, I'm sure you'll think of something. And I'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. Thank you ever so much. Tonight, wear something vaguely feminine to try and offset your tash. Can't. Got to go home and think about the shortcomings. Well, bring your shortcomings to They always break the ice at parties. Come on, it's an emergency. What happened to your first choice? She got homework. I'll pick you up at 7.30. Wax in my armpits. Mm, 9 o'clock, then. Shyness is nice and shyness can stop you from doing all the things in you said this was just a small thing. It is. Shyness and shyness can stop you from doing all the things in life you'd like to. It looks pretty grand to me. Well, you've been married to Paul for 20 years. Anything's going to look grand compared to a little chef. Whose party is it again? Stuart and Rosie. What's the occasion? There's one due for another hour at this time of night. What would you know about timetables? Look, come on. Come back in. I think you're overreacting. It's a wedding. So? So, do you really think I want to be reminded of all that stuff? Right now, this week? When my own marriage has turned to shit? Oh, come on, just one drink. Do you know what I found myself crying to the other day? Love Cats by The Cure. The Cure? Oh, I have no idea you're feeling that bad. <sighs> but the thing is, look, nobody knows anything about you in there. There'll be no awkward questions, no mention of Paul, nothing. All you have to do is enjoy yourself.
thank you. So I'm Gary. Sarah. Bride or groom? Neither. Divorced. <laughs> That's good, I like that. No, I am. Really. I thought I'd better um, get it out of the open. I'm going through a divorce at the moment and um, just standing here looking at the happy couple, thinking one day she's going to be going through his pockets looking for clues. I don't think so. Oh, come on. She's probably slept to one of the bridesmaids this afternoon. I don't think so. You're a man. You're bound to say that. That's true. That and the fact that I am the bride's father. Pulled dark haired woman over there. By the buffet? Uh, behind the buffet. The catering. I mean, how good is that? What about you? I just keep putting people off. I mention I'm divorced and they melt away. Well, don't tell them then. I can't help it. You don't have to tell them anything about yourself. You're never going to see any of these people ever again in your life. You can be a new you. Someone uh, attractive, perhaps, or uh, intelligent. Rachel. How'd you get in here? One of the Albanian guys picked the lock for me. Said he's a locksmith. Oh, well, that's one word for it. What are you doing here? Well, I thought I'd move in. Right. Great. I'm Dave. It's Sarah, right? Yeah, that's right. Do I know you? Have we met before? I know Mark from football. I... I asked him why the best looking woman in the room was drinking on her own. Oh, right. That was you I was talking about, by the way. Oh, right. <laughs> and what did Mark say? He said that men are frightened of you because you're a doctor. What? Well, he didn't put it as politely as that. Mark told you I was a doctor. There's no need to look so worried. I'm not going to ask you for a medical. Sorry. Blokes must be making jokes like that all the time. No, you're the first. So, uh, this is where you tell me you're married and I die of disappointment? No, no, not at all. I'm a widow. A widow? Oh, I'm sorry, I, I wouldn't have asked. Oh, it, it's OK, it, it's fine. I'm fine talking about it now. It was a couple of years ago. Did you have kids? Yeah, um, Rachel's nearly six, so she misses him, and um, John's only two. Um, I think that makes me um, 32, if my maths is right. So your husband died about the same time your son was born? Yeah, that, that's right. He was driving to the hospital. I don't know what to say. I used to make this joke that he died in childbirth, but nobody ever used to laugh. Oh, I'd have laughed. I would. Really? I meant what I said, by the way, about you being the most attractive woman in the room. Oh, that's nice. It's always nice to hear. Thank you. <laughs> Am I shaking your hand? Yeah. I don't normally do this. Well, it's, it's kind of exciting in a, a Victorian kind of way. Shall I stop? Shall I get us a drink? You've got to stop feeling sorry for yourself. It won't take much to decorate, and I can work on the table in the corner. We'll see a lot more of each other than we ever did. It'll be cool. It's Mum I'm thinking about. I don't know why. It's easy on your own. I can live with that. Just think you might get a bit lonely on your own, that's all. Doesn't stop me worrying about Mum, though. And maybe it's better you just went home. 
You're a nice man, Dad. Well, I try to see all sides. You've got Mum all wrong. It's you who needs me. It's fine, don't worry, I'll stay here. Thanks. Well, good night then. Nice to meet you. Thanks. Oh, you don't catch me out a second time. <laughs> Maybe see you again, yeah? Bye. She smelt of cheap pastry. <laughs> Have you any idea how good that is? Why did you tell him I was a doctor? Well, it's not that far off a health visitor. Why did you tell him you were a widow? Because by that stage, you had a top career in medicine. I didn't want to come across as too smug. So, you had a good time? Mm. Yeah, it was great. I just shook off all my history, and there I was, Dr Sarah, elegant young widow. So, what are you going to tell him when he finds out that mm, none of this is true? Well, then he'll realise he loves me for what I am and not what I pretended to be. Right. It always works in Elvis movies. Oh, God, don't tell me that isn't what really happens. Look, don't worry. You're never going to see Dave again. Oh, thanks for your vote of confidence, Mark. No, no, he just likes to flirt. He never takes a date home and he'll never call you. I think he's gay. Oh, <laughs> yeah, maybe he's just got good manners. All right, no, well, that's the same thing, really. So did you fancy him? Of course I did. That's why I lied. Sarah, you have no idea how hard it is to find a single man you fancy. You struck lucky first time out. OK, you need to track him down. And before he can say anything, before you've got a chance to change your mind, you just need to close your eyes and tell him. That easy, is it? Ah, uh, John. So, did you get lucky tonight? Don't remember. Mark, stop grunting my son. No, just try and give a kid a positive male role model. Did you have a good evening, sweetheart? Watch telly. Your sister back yet? She's gone to live with Dad. <laughs> this is how you remind me of what I really am. This is how you remind me of what I really am. It's not like you. Just so sorry. I was we not a different story. And this time I'm mistaken. How did you know which bell to press? I just looked for the one Mark Dickhead. Is that insult by way of an apology? What do you think I've got to apologise about? Encouraging Rachel to move in with me. I did not encourage Rachel. I don't want her with you. And now where I've seen where you live, I want it even less. Is that mould or are you trying to win the turn prize? You know, if you could just stop slagging me off, then maybe she wouldn't feel the need to make these dramatic gestures of loyalty. She did it because she thinks I had an affair. Now you could do something about that. <sighs> do you really think I want her living here? No. You, Veronica and Rachel on the sofa, I can see that could get crowded. Although the thought of all three of you sitting there will give me a warm glow inside. If you could just think about your daughter for five minutes. I am not chasing after her. That's exactly what she wants me to do. Maybe that's what she needs right now. Don't tell me how to handle Rachel. And don't try and turn this into Kramer versus Kramer just because you've never had to take her on before. So I have nothing to offer then? For once in your life, just be a good father. Just send her home. As a wise man, I couldn't cut it as a poor man stealing, and this is how you remind me. If Sarah thinks I'm such a bad father, why didn't she say something? Maybe she thought you guessed you're a bad father. I had. Don't stop, I'm not in the mood. Why does she have to be so angry all the time? You're getting a divorce. What do you expect? A chicken dinner and a blowjob? Too much to ask after 20 years. Oh, things move on, Paul. What's that supposed to mean? 
Oh, I don't know. I heard up in Kilroy this morning. She's moved on, as in moved on to another man. Oh, I haven't got that far. She has, not she? She's met someone else. Of course, that's why she came across as so smug and domineering. She hasn't met anyone else. She just did a bit of flirting at a party, that's all. Has uh, she seen him again? This is the bloke she fancies from work. Oh, I doubt it, but I, I don't know why I'm telling you any of this. So this is uh, a different guy she's oh, throwing herself at? What is it with you two? It's like being invited to a threesome and finding out you can only join in on the arguments. I've got to go. Uh, well, yeah, you, you think they had sex? Not that I noticed. Oh, but they were in a conga, so it's quite hard to tell. Oh, great. Look. They didn't have sex. He just likes to flirt. Believe me, she'll never see him again. Morning. Oh, hiya. What are you doing here? You give your work number on your answer phone. I rang it and tracked you down. So you're a detective? No, I'm an architect. What do you think? I'm sorry to surprise you like this, but you, uh, you left something behind when you ran off into the night? Oh, wrong woman. Uh, you could at least try it on. I can handle rejection as long as you blame yourself. Look, um, Dave, I I'm really not ready for this. So, um, it's lovely to be the woman of your dreams, and if you could put that in writing so I could frame it, perhaps. That is one of the great brush-offs, but the good thing is I, I don't want some intense relationship. I got divorced two years ago. It was messy. I've not really gone in for anything heavy since, so why don't the two of us go out and, and not do anything too heavy together? Come on, I'm a safe bet. I don't know. Here's the deal. I would really like to see you again, but we don't call it a date. Come on. Can't say fairer than that, can I, Doctor? OK. OK, why not? <laughs> no, no, there are only three lies you can tell a man. One, um, I love dressing up in this French maid's outfit. Mm. Two, you're the biggest I've ever had. And three, I always come quietly. <laughs> now you tell me. I'm just really surprised that he wants to see you again. Uh, well, maybe he finds me irresistible. No, no, I mean, there's got to be a better reason than that. Oh, so, look, Sarah, what are you going to wear? Probably the French maid's outfit, look, by the sounds of it. Why don't you wear what you wore to the wedding reception? I mean, he clearly fancied you in oh, that. Oh, yeah, great, and show off my poverty. Why not just turn up in pop socks pushing a shopping trolley for the cat food? Look, please, can we just leave my mother out of this? No, all I'm saying is that there was something about you that you liked that night if he's come back. Yes, the fact that I'm a 32-year-old doctor widow woman. Everything he likes about me is a lie. Yeah, but think how liberating it's going to be when you do tell him the truth. Oh, that's great, coming from our resident truth expert. Yeah, well, it's different for me. Why is it? I lied to my mum and dad because it was all my fault. You know, you don't even have that excuse. I don't understand. I thought it was your husband that played away, wasn't it? I... I, I thought you knew. I thought, um, what Mark had told you. It was... it was me that had the affair. Oh, right. Um, anyway, who am I to talk? I killed my husband this week. Well, much as I'd love to sit and watch you two mud wrestle over this one, I've got to go. Have you got a date? With the caterer, right? Uh, you know, I think I might have stumbled on the perfect relationship. She works nights and weekends, then she turns up after closing time with leftovers. I get laid, I get freedom, I get pastries. Why don't you just buy a bag of ring donuts and show them a good time? I know those days are behind me now that I found Joyce. Joyce? Did you say her name was Joyce? Yeah. Mm. Well, I, I prefer the caterer. Right, and that's what the press will call her when they find your head in her freezer. And what does she call you? The Buffy. I could come over and help you decorate. Oh, you think I need to decorate? Yeah, it's going to take some work, especially if Rachel's staying for long. You thought it was good enough for me. You're a man. You think a toilet brush compromises your sexuality? I think I should let Rachel settle in first. 
Okay. I'll probably spend more time over the flood just to make sure she's okay. Yeah, fine. We should do whatever makes you feel comfortable. Just me and Rachel, just for now. She's had a lot to deal with over the last few weeks. Yeah, yeah, I get it, Paul. You don't have to draw me pictures. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's not a problem. I always knew you had kids and they were part of the package. It's not a problem. Good. Great. Where are you going? Well, it's Rachel's first night. I think I should be there. Maybe I could come over and help. Oh, I can cope. Really. It wasn't your marriage I broke up, OK? Sorry? I had an affair. People have affairs. I said I was fine with it. You know, these things do happen. But I won't spend my whole life feeling ashamed. So why haven't you told your mum and dad, then? It's better be important. Oh, thank goodness for that. I was really worried you'd be in a bad mood. Mum and dad are going to be shocked enough when they find out. I was kind of hoping that maybe you could, um, soften the blow by taking the blame yourself. Why would I do that? Because, despite the fact I cheated on you, there's, um, there's still a little corner of your heart that is forever Julie. If I thought that was true, I'd have it surgically removed. I mean, you're supposed to be begging me for help. All you're doing is taking the piss. Maybe you could tell them you were gay or something. What? You don't have to do a Graham Norton or anything. Something a little bit more understated. That'd be fine. <laughs> it's your mess. Oh, please, Craig. I am really in the shit here. You know what they're like. I've spent my entire adult life apologising for letting them down. Please don't make me do it again. For a year, I woke up every morning and felt like dying because of what you did to me. Even now, if I see someone in the street who looks like you, I start shaking. You turned me into a middle-aged, burnt-out, fat twat. You made me the sort of bloke I used to laugh at. So don't insult me by asking me to bail you out. OK, OK. sure you've got that on the right way around? It, is it too low? It is, isn't it? That's revulsion in your eyes, isn't it? I don't know what you're worried about, Sarah. You look great. When I run around naked, everything wobbles. <laughs> and at what stage of the evening exactly are you planning to run around naked? No, it's all right for you. You're a tart. <laughs> the men aren't looking for perfection. They're scared of perfection. They like a bit of cellulite and rough skin to make them feel secure. Nobody has seen me naked. 20 years, apart from a husband, my kids, and a doctor. Well, at least your doctor hasn't left you. That's got to be a good sign, isn't it? I'll get changed. Take off all your preppy clothes. You know you're not fooling.
thought you'd stood me up. After shedding out on this outfit. I think you look fantastic. Thanks for your builder. You dwarfists saw John Prescott views wearing stilettos. Well, who wouldn't? <laughs> um, who's looking after your kids today? Oh, um, they're fine. Um, leave me down the pub or hanging out around park benches. If you don't want to tell me, it's fine. But you don't have to take the piss. Oh, I I'm sorry. It's habit, I suppose. My sister babysits for me. Um, could we have a minute? Um, Dave, um, I don't want to seem ungrateful, but do you think we could just have a drink instead? It's just that I ate already, just in case you didn't want to eat till later. That's great. I did exactly the same thing. <laughs> oh. With that, Bob the Builder, I'd have gone bust years ago. It's turning the mystery round, image-wise. Of course, pilchered the cats in flagrant breach of the Health and Safety Act. So do you watch quite a lot of kids telly? Not normally, no. But I thought you might, so I, um, I boned up on what your kids might watch, so we'd have something to talk about. Ooh. I'm flattered. I'm a builder and I'm out with a doctor. I needed a backup plan. And that involved studying Bob the Builder? Well, it was either that or my book of Howard Shipman jokes. And, you know, I was keen to impress. Sorry, have I, have I just blown it? No. It's nothing like that. It's just, um, you're a bit of a surprise. Mark kind of told me you weren't the sort of bloke that liked to try too hard. I'll thank him for the reference next time I see him. No, he was doing you a favour. That's, um, kind of what I wanted. Oh. We agreed we weren't going to get too heavy. Didn't we? We did. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, this is it's a bit strange. No, I'm sorry. It was, it was bad timing. It's just there's, there's been so many gaps in the conversation. I, I didn't know whether they were kissing gaps or... <laughs> Just that we've got nothing in common. It's never an easy call. What are you doing? I thought we could talk. You know. Communicate like two mature human beings. I'm reading leaflets in the library. I just think maybe now we're living together. There should be times when we can talk to each other, get things out in the open. Not iron out any misunderstandings about me or mum, that sort of thing. Right. I mean, now. Well, why not? We see Stenders for one. Come on, Rach, this is important. OK, you go first. Me? Yeah, it was your idea. Right. Right. Did you move in here because you were pissed off with Mum, or you wanted to be with me? A bit of both, I suppose. I just didn't like the thought of you being here on your own every night. Oh. Is that it? Dad. Oh, it'll be for the Albanians. It's, you know. And if it's the mate with a good mandolin, I'm going out, OK? Dad. Well, you know what they say. If the mozzarella won't come to Mohammed, See each other again then? Hmm, yeah. That'd be nice. Good. Nothing too heavy. Nothing too heavy. 
you'd have to sound quite so enthusiastic. If you had any idea how strange this whole evening's been for me. I'm sorry. Didn't mean to be too pushy. Uh, don't apologize. I enjoyed it. It's just been a while. Oh, and for the record, you're too good looking to be a doctor. Kind of average looking, for builder. Yeah, because I've been working in an art doctor. Yeah, yeah. And I found one down field two days since. Dead. So that's a shame. This is a nice surprise. Isn't it, Rich? Yeah, I didn't think we were going to eat tonight. Well, I mean, Veronica visiting is a nice surprise. Well, I don't know Veronica, do I? So I don't know whether it's a nice surprise or not. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> Rachel's doing her A-levels, aren't you, Rachel? Yes, Dad, and why do you keep asking me questions that you already know the answers to? What, uh, what subjects are you doing? English, economics, sociology and psychology. Know where to hide, huh? What? You know, analysing me, all that. Oh, right, and coming from a broken home. Yes, I know what you mean now. These jokes take a bit of getting used to, don't they? Mum says that the tenser he gets, the worse his jokes get. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going out. Where, where, where are you going? I didn't know where you were going out. We're meeting at MRC. Bye. But, 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 you want to take some pizza? I don't like anchovies. I'd never really seen Snow White from the wicked stepmother's point of view before. I thought we agreed. We weren't expecting you. I thought we agreed you needed more time to settle in. I meant to kiss him. Not before I told him I wasn't a doctor. Why? Were you worried he'd pass out? Because I didn't want to get any more involved until I told him the truth. Why don't you do what I do? Blurt out the truth, and then if things turn nasty, tell him you were joking. I wanted to tell him. You know, I was going to, and then I thought, I met him three times, and each time I'd lie to him. That's a pretty bad record, huh? Well, he's a builder. And he lies for a living. I mean, he, of all people, should understand. He was so sweet about my false life. He'd watch Bob the Builder and everything. Well, I think he's probably stupid enough to forgive you. He probably won't ring after tonight, anyway. Oh, well, two dates and no more than a kiss at a taxi ride. Don't know many men that come back for more. Just as well. I'm exhausted. <laughs> In my tribe, you've got your comrade, mate. Right? Call your mum with Tuiana. All the rest is bullshit. Right. So, that's Sarah. Well, Dave, she isn't a building. Maybe that's where you're getting confused. Just mean I can't place her. Where I am with her. I really like her, but if she doesn't like me, then I need to know now before I get in too deep. Do you mind I'm in the middle of a workout here? Oh, come on, Mark. You've got to help me out. You got me into this. No, no, I just introduced you. You did the rest with your arousing tales of loft conversions. Well, she talked about me? She must have said something. Yes, she mentioned your tiny, tiny penis. I thought you were Mr. Casual. 
I'd never have introduced you if I'd known you were going to get all Mills and Boone. I just feel like I've done something wrong. I can't work out what it is. Well, that's how women are supposed to make you feel. Can you sit there and, and look me in the eye and tell me that, to your knowledge, she's no more self-obsessed, neurotic and moody than the average woman? I expect you're wondering why I wanted to see you in such a rush. No, not really. Um, the, the thing is, Dave, there's no easy way to say this. Um, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a widow. And I'm not 32. And you're not honest? No. That's right. Well, I am normally very honest. Funny enough, it's my husband that's the terrible liar. It was so bad, he was dead yesterday. But then I, I thought I'd never see you again after the wedding. So I went along with Mark's lies about me and, and I did a few of my own. And you seemed to like me. And then when I saw you again, I meant to tell you, but we seemed to be getting on so well, and I thought, why well, ruin it? It's been 20 years since I've done any of this stuff. Maybe I'm just not confident enough to be myself. You seem very calm. Is, is that a good sign, or are you searching for an insult? I've had a bit of time to get used to the idea. Mark told me the truth this morning. Oh. I'd hate to drop him in it. I really have to dig it out of him. No, it's fine. It's better that you know. I, I just wish it had come from me, that's all. It's a real pity, you know. Because I thought we really got on. Yeah, me too. Haven't you ever lied just a little bit when you've met someone new? No. Not even about what music you like or what books you've read? No. So you really do listen to jazz music without falling asleep? That's right. Come on, Dave. Clean slate. Fresh start. I mean, maybe we could make this work, now that we're telling the truth. Maybe. Let me just buy you a coffee, tell you about some of my good points. Something go wrong around. At least if he'd run up the 20-year-old, I could have comforted myself that he just wanted a younger model. But he didn't. And when it's your personality that they don't want, well, it's not easy. It takes a lot of getting used to. And you know what? I don't think I'm that bad. I've got a good sense of humour. I'm good at my job. I'm not called to animals. And I can answer a lot of the questions on who wants to be a millionaire. What about you? I don't think I can do this. Right. I'm sorry, Sarah. I mean it, I really can't. I don't know what's the story with you and what isn't. I can't trust you. Well, why don't you just say all this in the car park? I wanted it to work. I wanted to be able to look you in the eye and, and not feel like the stupidest man in the world for believing all that stuff about you being a doctor and a widow. But I can't. You make me feel stupid. Maybe that's because I'm cleverer than you are. You wouldn't have done. 
So, is Veronica your girlfriend? No, oh, she's not my girlfriend. Someone I know through work. So how come she knew what pizza you liked? What? Come on, Dad, she knew too much about you just be someone from work, not stupid. OK. Yeah. She's my girlfriend. And how long has this been going on for, exactly? I'm not going to be interrogated about my love life, OK? So before you and Mum split up, then? You know what? You know what? I'm going to tell you the truth. I know about Father Christmas, Dad. I'm serious, Rich. Yeah. I was having an affair with Veronica before me and Mum split up. And while we're on the subject, your mum didn't have any affair. Jeez. I only moved in here because I felt sorry for you. You have made me look so stupid and you've made me mess it up with Mum. You're such an asshole, Dad. Well, you prefer if I lie to you, is that what you're saying? Moving, Craig. The stop taking. What do you want now? Now let me guess. Uh, there's a murder you've committed, and you were wondering if I'd take the rap. I just wanted to say thank you for going to see my mum and dad. I know it took a lot for you to do that, and um, thanks for bailing me out again. You don't think I did it for you, do you? Mm. Oh, whatever. You did it for your parents. I don't see why they should be hurt by your terrible behaviour. I mean, having you for a daughter's probably even worse than having you for a wife. All right. I thought it best to draw a line under the past. Well, I'm all for that. Especially now I'm married again. You got married again? Last April, yeah. <laughs> well, right. Um, congratulations. I've been waiting for you. Of course, the bus stop, the bus, it all starts to make sense now. You know what I mean. I tried to call you, but you never have your mobile on. Why did you tell him? He asked me, and I wasn't going to lie anymore. Well, you started it. You were agonising about it. I just made it easier for you. <sighs> and I was pigging the middle with you and Paul for two years, and I wasn't going to go through that again. I said, all right. about yourself now you've come clean? Uh, no. I'd rather still be lying and not be dumped. Ah, oh, you don't mean that. It's all right for you. All you have to worry about is pastry crumbs on your pillow. Ah, oh, well, uh, that's over, actually. Caterer and me. Oh, sorry, I didn't realise. Mm. She came round to mine the other night and she didn't have any leftovers with her. No pastries, no savouries, no nothing. And you finished with her because of that? Oh, no, 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 not at all. But she could see the disappointment in my eyes and she finished with me. But I bet you feel better about yourself, right? Is that Julie? Is it going grey? Yes. Has he put on weight? Yes. Well, bloody hell, Julie, you can't have everything. But I'm supposed to be the strong one. I want it out. He's meant to be heartbroken. So you're upset because he isn't suffering anymore? I thought when this moment came, I'd be happy for him. I really did. When he told me, I felt like I'd been kicked in the stomach. Well, he's clearly married her on the rebound. Oh, do you think so? Well, he can't be doing it because he liked it so much the first time round, can he? Not after the shit that you put him through. 
You have had one or two relationships since you spelt with Craig. You know, when I thought he wasn't over me, I felt guilty, but um, part of me liked it. Part of me liked the fact that he was still in love with me. Ah, uh, the old negative equity of the heart. Yeah. That make me a bad person? Yes. No. It's complicated. Why does everything have to mean something? Julie's a bad person. It's really no deeper than that. Let's just get on with our lives. You're entitled to feel a twinge about Craig getting married. I mean, it's perfectly natural. Even if um, you did leave him and didn't want to be married to him. We're living in an age of moral uncertainty. I blame Prince Charles. Mark. Yeah, well, this is what happens when you break the rule. What rule? Never go back. Never go back and see what happened to the lover you dumped, because this world, being what it is, the odds are they're having a better bastard time of it than you are. What's that then? Leaving prison. I'm not leaving. If that's all right. Yeah, it's fine. I was lying for a good reason. Didn't want you to hate my guts. It's fine. But like that time I laughed at the singer and the prodigy, I couldn't stand it if you looked at me like that again. Right, so that's it. We don't have to hug or anything, do we? No. We're still British when all said and done. Since we're being honest and all that, nothing you said about moving in because you felt sorry for me. Was that true or just something you said in anger? No, I meant that. OK, fine. Good. So I stopped myself from lying. And uh, I did what you suggested. And I told Rachel the truth, that I had been having an affair with Veronica while I was still with Sarah. And it's all worked out. And I thought, you know, this stuff might actually work. And did you tell Rachel that I didn't have an affair? Didn't I mention that? Yeah, I did. Well, I'm glad it all turned out so positively. You are still full of shit, Paul. What more can I do? You hang around alive long enough and you start telling lies yourself. I feel like I've been infected by you. I think it's catching. Do you want to tell us what's upsetting you? I met a man and I lied to him. I made stuff up to impress him. And you blame Paul for that? Is this the man you met with Mark at the party? Yes, I blame Paul for that. Which man? You don't know him. Why did you feel like you had to lie? I knew it wasn't going to be some big love affair. I know it's too soon after Paul, but it was just easier than telling the truth. Will you just tell me his name? It made me feel free. Anything I disliked about myself, I just ditched. And then I realised that it's just what Paul does. All the time, and I'd caught the habit off of him. See, that's fair, Paul. What man? I'm not here for love. 20 years of my life down the tube. Now it's a second-class stamp. Paul started to be nice to me, and that seems a strange reaction now I've started divorce proceedings. Maybe it's because he's contesting a divorce. What? I'm mainly here for a uh, meaningless sex. Up next, all of today's Premiership action, including Arsenal's visit to Leeds and Man United's clash with Portsmouth. Then at midnight, Frank Skinner chats to Helen Mirren and Matthew Kelly. Stay with us. <laughs>